I'm James Spann. This is the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 30th day of August. Uh, it's a pretty decent rain around here yesterday. We tend to dry out this week. The tropics, a big story with lots of action there in the Atlantic. Let's take a look. Some of the sky cam shots this morning. First off, coming from downtown Jasper, where a little light rain is falling at 5 o'clock this morning. Down south, that's the Edmund Pettus Bridge crossing the Alabama River in Dallas County at Selma. And for the Birmingham Metro, that's the Inverness Sky Cam overlooking traffic on U.S. Highway 280. Water vapor satellite shot, the uh, tropical load that came into southeast Louisiana Friday helped to bring some pretty decent rain to parts of the state yesterday. That feature is weakening and drifting north. We've got drier air north of us over Virginia, the middle Atlantic coast region with that strong upper high. It's awfully hot up there and a very, very deep trough out west. Check the radar locally here at uh, 5.06 this morning. You can see those patches of light rain, uh, some rain falling over parts of Walker, and southern Coleman, western Blunt counties, rain over northwest Alabama around the shoals, and some light rain falling between Selma and Marion. And we'll maintain the chance of a few showers this morning, but we think the air begins to dry out later today as the sky becomes partially sunny by afternoon. Check the convective outlooks. Haven't looked at those lately. I mean, it's not the time of the year where you have any risks down here. Typically, unless there's a tropical system involved, there's today a slight risk from northern Kansas up to the Canadian border. And tomorrow, the upper Midwest with a slight risk. QPF chart rain for the next five days, valid through uh, Friday evening at 7. A little bit showing up, uh, but basically that's what was expected last night and this morning. Really, after midday today, we should be mostly dry through Friday. Heavier rains from near Tulsa, Oklahoma. Up to Marquette, Michigan. And the bigger numbers on the board in association with Hurricane Earl off the Atlantic coast. And our friends will be nervously watching that. But let's talk about the tropics here. Uh, this is the uh, broad view. Danielle is on the way out. We're not going to worry about that. That's uh, kicking out the sea. Earl is uh, the next hurricane in line down there just north of the uh, leewards. You've got uh, what should be Fiona. By golly, that thing never developed over the weekend. That's pretty interesting. And behind that, the system that could be Gaston. So really, there's four to watch out there. The guys at NHC have a 90% probability of uh, Fiona getting her act together. Look at Earl this morning. That thing is awfully close to the Leeward Islands. And uh, we've got the hurricane warnings in effect for that region, this thing is uh, packing sustained winds of 105 miles per hour, slowly ramping up. It's not a major hurricane at this point, Category 2, but still it's uh, strong enough. Here's the modeling on Earl. Most of the dynamic models are in very good agreement with a recurve just off the east coast of the United States between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda. And there has been good agreement over the weekend and uh, uh We'll check the European just for the fun of it. Th this has been the outlier all along. This is valid Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. It's got that thing dangerously close to the Outer Banks. And uh, that's a little outlier to the uh, left. No doubt it's going to generate some rough surf and swells and may be close enough to create some wind issues. But, uh, again, uh, they'll be on the just on the edge of this thing. Here's the intensity uh, guidance coming from the, the various – Models, and most of them ramp this up into a major Category 3. Some bring it to a Category 4 hurricane, and then it slowly weakens once it gets up in the North Atlantic in four to five days. And there's the official track from the Hurricane Center. And again, it follows the guidance uh, very, very carefully. Uh, it should be a major hurricane passing uh, east of Cape Hatteras Thursday night. And uh, again, that's a close call. But thank goodness this thing stays just offshore. It's going to also sideswipe Cape Cod up there. And then finally, this uh, Labor Day weekend, it kicks out. All right, the one behind Earl there on the, the right, that's uh, 97L that uh, could become Fiona. But the modeling on this one, very consistent with a recurve well to the east of the United States uh, this weekend with no impact on the states at all. And that's been the preferred track of choice for these things so far this year, and that's fine for us. Uh, there's the intensity guidance on uh, what should be Fiona. Most models bring it to a tropical storm. They do not bring it to a hurricane, and 
Do keep in mind that there's been a lot of upwelling with those first two hurricanes. And this thing's kind of following in the path. It might be uh, related to the cooler water coming up from below. That water's been churned up, but we'll watch it. And again, the, the Gaston, the one behind it, don't have any guidance on that yet, but we'll see. Long way out there. Here's the GFS. This is the uh, OZ run ballot at 1 o'clock today. Heights are coming up. That means we're going to heat up again. You know, yesterday, Birmingham's high was only 81 because of the clouds and showers. And many spots stayed in the 70s all day. That was a nice break from the heat, but uh, the heat's going to come back. Uh, down below that, uh, again, we'll maintain the chance of showers this morning. But as the upper high builds in and dry air noses in from the northeast, the afternoon should be mostly dry. Tomorrow should be a dry day. We heat up into the low 90s. There's Earl creeping in the picture. Wednesday, dry weather here. Earl moving northwest. All right, Thursday, that's when that thing is awfully close. Uh, this is uh, 18Z Thursday, 1 o'clock local time. Earl is uh, kind of sideswiping the Outer Banks. We're dry as a bone. And here comes Fiona down there in the lower right. Friday, Earl is sideswiping Cape Cod. You know, the GFS has been adjusting west with this thing. Uh, Friday afternoon at 1 o'clock, Fiona not very strong. Following in the path of the first two, Danielle and Earl, we stay dry. Saturday, kicking off the Labor Day weekend. The end of summer, if you will, for most Americans. And a nice trough over the East Coast. That's going to swing Earl out to sea. Here comes Fiona, a very weak-looking storm. And again, uh, that upwelling could have a lot to do with that. But we look dry. What Labor Day weekend here looks fine. Uh, mostly sunny with, uh, uh, and by, we should note, a, a surface boundary creeps in here Friday, probably in dry fashion. Looks pretty comfortable with that uh, nice nose of drier air coming in from the north and continental air. So highs probably around 90, maybe upper 80s and lows in the 60s. Sunday looks like a great day. And Monday, which is a holiday for many people, which is Labor Day, a little moisture tries to creep in here, but obviously with this look, no widespread rain expected. We'll check the end of the forecast out there at mid-month, mid-September, the 14th. The westerlies getting deeper and stronger, which is what they do this time of the year. Nice trough digging down across the uh, Plain States. And uh, again, a cold front is associated with that. Look at the 540 line up there in Canada almost down to International Falls, Minnesota. And that suggests maybe some risk of showers there. But again, tropical weather at that point looks quiet. We'll see. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you're local to us, we do invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless.